Welcome to Rex Corner. You guys have asked to bring John Keane back, and I found him. After all this time, I found him. He's been uh, he's been going to school and working on all kinds of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, I have. I graduated uh, two years ago. I passed uh, a couple parts of the CBA exam, and uh, then I took some time off. I claim to be studying. I have been drinking wine and playing with dogs the entire time, and tell, just telling people that I'm studying. So. Uh, you have to study that hard to get you get grades. I, I tell you, you know, it's a mile, the, the CPA exams a mile wide and an inch deep. It's it's profoundly. Uh, it's not conceptually challenging. It's just a lot of information you have to retain for yeah. three hours. Yeah. Um, and some of it's pretty complex in terms of uh, taxation. Um, it's just not. It's not like one of those sexy STEM fields like engineering or chemistry. It's just kind of. Um, just kind of. A bunch of rules, and it's just mind-numbingly uh, boring. <clears throat> but you're good at it. I I think so. I sh probably should have studied uh, engineering. Was was something I thought was interesting. Civil engineering, I think, is uh, is interesting. It's something that you can get excited about. Yeah. I still look at uh, structures on uh, on YouTube, and I'm like, who who looks at audit on YouTube? That's just it's not, it's not <laughs> sexy. It's not. No, but it's what you chose to do. Yeah, I got to tell myself that every morning. You can always change it, but you know, up too old. You might that. at some point. Yeah, maybe. Um, people have been. Uh, commenting on my video the past two days. You guys want to know what's wrong with my eye. Uh, I broke a blood vessel in it, and it's very common. And the funny thing was, I didn't even know it. I took a shower, I went to take my girlfriend out to dinner, and she gets in the car and looks at me, she says, oh my God, what happened to your eye? I said, I don't know, what happened? She says, it's all red. I said, oh, it sure is. So it's a blood vessel. I tell people different stories. I told somebody I was driving up there, and a squirrel jumped in my window out in the mountains, and he tried to get some nuts and hit me in the eye. Nice. And I told somebody else I got hit by a pelican down at the beach. <laughs> so I try to think of good stories. The last one was I went to see Wonder Woman 3D, and when they were riding around and rocks were flying out of the screen, one hit me in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> so um, <laughs> you got to keep it interesting for people. So they say, wow, those are good stories. <laughs> so Rick is one of those great guys in the gym that can change the entire environment of the gym. If he's in the gym, uh, he's going to be laughing. He's going to tell you a why story. Everybody loves the guy. Um, that that's he's actually a legend, and I'm not just saying that. Who's this uh, we're talking about? You, you. Oh. I'm talking about. And that's everybody <laughs> says that. He's just a, one of those great, uh, great guys in the gym that really makes you enjoy uh, coming to the gym and interacting with people. It makes it a, just a great experience. Well, I like the gym. I mean, I grew up going to the gym, and people, everybody comes in there, whether they're a superstar or not. I talk to them if I see improvement, and I let them know that they're improving. Just the average guy or the average girl. Because they're there and their egos are they're kind of afraid to be seen or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And when they're making good progress, I want to let them know that I, I see it. And nice. boy, that really motivates them. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. I think it's important to tell people, you don't, you don't want to hear bad stuff all day. Well, I don't get that on the news. You want to hear good stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, someone says you're fat. No, you're not fat. You know what? You look great. You've done a good job with your body and be proud. Nice, nice. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's what it's all about. Now, you're approaching, uh, you said 45? Yeah, yeah, Friday. Okay, a lot of you guys write into me in their 40s and 50s, 60s, 70s. I had one guy write to me who's 82 and he's going to compete. So he said he wanted to know something about diet and training. He's working hard. So he said, but please don't make me give up my alcohol. Yeah, so I, I said, at 82, either. you can do whatever you want to do. There's nothing that I'm like, there's nothing to live for if I can't drink. But we were, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we were talking about um, the body changing over a period of time. And at, at 25, you were good at your game, and at 35, you were good at 45. You still feel it? Does it has it changed for you? Absolutely, yeah. Um, even even mid to late 30s, um, I could kind of be sloppy on my diet. I could drink, um, and it just it didn't really show up. Now it shows up. I'm, I'll look flat. Uh, my strength, my strength really. Uh, I, I used to easily. I could be clean and hit uh, 405 for a couple reps on bench. Now, I mean, it's it's a it's a real struggle. The weights feel heavier. Mm -hmm. um, I don't look as uh, as three dimensional. I don't look as lean or full. Um, yeah, make a little dietary mistake. It's, I actually have to try a lot harder than I it used to. I hate to say this. I just pull a syringe back in one of my younger days and, well, and, and off of we go. But now, yeah, I can't do that now. You know, it doesn't work like it used to. No, no, my whole body doesn't. Uh, it sometimes it, I was on when I do dumbbell incline, incline press, my right arm just doesn't fire. It just it goes like that and it just falls off. And then really? I, had to, I had to bring a weight down. Yeah. Uh, they have these anti-aging clinics for a lot of older guys. I know a few of the doctors are doing it. Now these guys, the men that go there, some of them have never worked out before, so they put them on GH and testosterone because they're 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 really low. Mm -hmm. Their 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 results come back really low, and boy, do they make good progress because it's all new to them. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's a it's a whole new deal for them to to have the testosterone replacement, and it it does help. Of course, along with nutrition and training with the weights, it's going to make a huge difference. And I'm actually officially on uh, just testosterone replacement therapy right now. It's under doctor supervision. And why were you low? Yeah, I when 
as you know, I was in the hospital for a month. And yeah, the doctors right. said, come off of all of, all of your shenanigans, your growth hormone, your gram of trend, your 1.2 grams of test. So I came, I came off it all. I was on heavy, uh, heavy heart medication, and uh, after a few months, I weighed, I weighed 190 something pounds. Really? Yeah, I wouldn't. I just got to, I wouldn't come back to Gold's Gym. Yeah, I was. Uh, I went in at 240 something, and I came out, uh, came out at. Uh, I'm tired all the time, 190 something pounds. It's really, it's, it's really, um, yeah, it's really challenging. Well, that's amazing because when I had pneumonia, I lost 30, and I came home and I was like 197, and I was walking around the house with an oxygen machine. I couldn't breathe. My oxygen was 76, but uh, now it's back up to 98, and I feel great. But it does weaken you. Yeah, the weight loss yeah. really weakens you. You know. Yeah, and I was on a really aggressive. Uh, I'm still on it right now. It's an aggressive heart medication called uh, Carvedilol. My uh, I had congestive heart failure. My ejection fra left ventricle ejection fraction was down ten percent. So per per pump, only ten percent of the of the total blood in the heart can distribute to right. for vital organ function. <clears throat> and I was in ICU and the uh, in the second week, and then um, yeah, it was tough. It was tough. I was on uh, hooked up to heart monitors, and it was it was interesting. They give you you know they have a low fat fat diet in a yeah. hospital and uh, low fat low sodium. And I'm getting diuretics. And I'm like I went. I would not take my foot off the gas because I want to go to nationals. I'm like, so I tank my heart, but I look great. I'm taking, I'm the idiot taking selfies in ICU. <laughs> and I'm like, what a moron. And I called my girl. I'm like, hey, can you bring me a tank top? And I'm lifting weights, walking around the hospital oh my like God. a jerk. Who does that? You do. Yeah, I do. I do. The thing is, the diuretics, because I took them too, uh, they really drain the water out. Yeah. Big time. Um, like I said, 30 pounds, and, you, and it leans you out, but it's certainly better for your heart. Yeah, once I, um, yeah, I felt a little bit better. Um, the doctor, uh, I had two uh, cardiology teams, and uh, the doctor said, he goes, it's not going to reverse. He goes, you did this yourself. Uh, yeah, he's pretty blunt about it. And then I was like, well, in terms of, um, in terms of uh, mortality, uh, how long do I have? Because I, he goes, you could. You, he goes, I could die tomorrow, and I'm like, oh no, it's not that good. That's the so, I was studying for the CBA exam. I'm like, it would be great if I died this year. I could stop studying for this. Oh test. shit, that's pretty extreme. <laughs> um, but but what contributed to the heart problem? Uh, of all things, it was a virus. I was 100 percent sure that you know I I thought it was all the uh, heavy drugs that I was using, mm -hmm. and uh, it's usually not. It wasn't. No, it wasn't at all. You know what? They did every. I, I'm absolutely fine. It had no impact. Uh, it's the same thing when I had pneumonia and, and the congestive heart failure. I'll tell you exactly what happened. I'll tell all of you what happened. Here's what I had. Back in the 70s, we had oxygen tanks in the gym mm -hmm. on those hot, smoggy days that we get in California because you can't even breathe. Yeah. So Arnold and Waller and the guys, they hook it up in the side of the building, and we would breathe oxygen in between our squats for energy. Oh, nice, nice. So when my mom was in the hospital before she passed away, we had two units, and I had one in my garage sitting out there for about seven years, maybe eight years. And I brought it out one day. I said, well, I think I want to use this. It's kind of a hot day, and I'm breathing this oxygen, not mm -hmm. realizing that the machine's been sitting in my garage. It's full of dust, dirt, mites, rat droppings, and God knows what else on that filter. So I breathed in some bacterial thing into my oh, lung, wow. which caused an infection, which gave me pneumonia, which spilled over to heart, uh, congestive heart failure. So it didn't come from anything I was doing as far as any medications or diets or whatever. It was a machine that had a bacterial thing in it. I had no idea. Isn't that strange? Yeah, yeah. But that's what it boiled down to. Yeah, and mine was a virus. Um, I just, uh, I was like, let me, let me just kind of back everything down, and yeah, and, uh, yeah it was, it was real, it was a real close call. It's kind of scary. But I'll also say this: when I had my knee replacement done, which I just told you about, and at my age, um, I talked to several physical therapists who tell me, "Oh my God, you're so lucky. These guys come in there and for a year and a half in rehab, they can't even bend their leg." Within six weeks, I was 120 degrees back. Yeah, I'm doing squats, leg extensions, walking upstairs, and there's literally no pain at all. And I really think that my doctor who put me back on testosterone and some a little GH, very small amount, one one unit a day, helped me heal quicker. And so mm -hmm. my doctor said, "You know what? I think you're right because you've healed in like in no time." Yeah. Wow. So it definitely it definitely helped in the healing process. You know, I wasn't taking I wasn't taking to get big and muscular. I was taking to heal up an injury or a, a surgery that I had. And you've always been incredibly uh, resilient. Yeah, I don't know why. I think I'm waterproof. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but you know what it is? Is you've got to you got to fight back. You know, you know how it is. You go back to the gym little by little. You get your nutrition and key, and you work out little by little until you start getting your strength back, and you you beat it. Yeah, yeah. I had a um, it's called a life vest. It's this giant has a Big, it has a big monitor and it just flashes red and then I'm in the gym with this 
embarrassing device. You have to wear it like 24 hours? Yeah, I tell you what, again, it, you know, we want to feel like men. Uh, yeah. You know, it, I just didn't, I just didn't, I felt weak and. Well, uh, it gives a reading. Yeah, well, no, there's a company that monitors it. Um, yeah. Just like when, uh, I don't, when I was in ICU, they're, they're monitoring your heart at all times, and then uh, there was a bunch of young girls in there, like everything I did, they knew. And I'm like, I'm you know, looking at, I'm looking at what guys look at on our telephones. Yeah. And I'm like, oh no, my heart rate's going up. <laughs> it, but I, I didn't want to embarrass myself. So but, you got back into your training, little by little. Yeah, yeah. Now you're in full training again. Yeah, everything came back up. Um, maybe my weight's probably 225, 230. Um, I was, I had pushed it over 250, and then I cleaned it up around 24. I was going to go to uh, Ma do Masters Nationals. That's heavy. Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah, I think um, the heaviest I've been at goals is maybe in a, in a 2.4. Oh, it was pretty lean, actually. How'd you get your weight up that high? <laughs> More drugs. Really? That's what it was? Yeah. yeah. But did you overkill on them, or was it done? Um, so with me, if I do if I do a lot of drugs <clears throat> and I eat a lot, but I have to force feed the... Um, yeah, you got to get the food in. Yeah, if I don't, if I don't, I just shrink. Um, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of work to take up so much space, and I thought that's what tanked my heart, and luckily it didn't, but... Uh, I'm like, well, I do all this just to take up more space, <laughs> and I, I kind of felt like, you know, if, you know, when you're when you're in a hospital and you, you you're looking at maybe dying with the end of the year, it kind of yeah. puts you in a different philosophical space. And I said, you know, when I get out, I, I don't really care about competing. Uh, I want to do something meaningful, something to move humanity forward. I, I, yeah. So I, I kind of really got into a dog rescue. Um, it, it's meaningful. It's That's it's great. It's, yeah, it's therapeutic for the dogs, therapeutic for the humans, and instead of doing cardio. I uh, volunteer at um, a local shelter, Best Friends Animal Society, and I found, um, I, I had a dog pass away, and I, I walked up, I just saw this dog reminded me of a teen, me as a teenager, if you make eye contact, he wants to, wants to fight you, and I just, you know, I had a soft spot for this guy, so I said, what would it take to take this guy on a run, and I, I got to training, and then I take all the dogs for runs, it's, it's way more meaningful cardio. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, something I enjoy, yeah, and I have nine, uh, I have nine dogs and two pigeons. I um, well, I went to get my. I got a German Shepherd, and I uh, was talking to a lady, and uh, I'm driving, and my fiance calls, and she goes, "Where are you?" I said, "I'm having an affair." She said, "Well, okay, as long as you don't bring another dog home." So, yeah, I have nine dogs, two pigeons, and uh, yeah, no, life is good. Life is good. Instead of trying to, you know, weigh two fifty, I got to try yeah. to do more meaningful things. Yeah, because they tell you, they told me the same thing. If you go home today, you'll die tomorrow. And I said, "Wait a minute, I got to pull back on that one." It's really funny though, I went to get a passport and it has my date of birth. Yeah. It didn't have an expiration date. Nice, there you go. <laughs> yeah, why is that on it? So I guess it's a long time to come. But getting back into training, and I think we just talked about this in another room. Um, for example, curling 50, 60 pounds back in the day, then you go to 20, 25s now, and they feel just as heavy as the 50s and 60s. Yeah, I, um, I thought that I was just aging. I started using lighter and lighter weights, and then I, I one day I said, Look, what happens if I just pick up 135 again, what happens if I just throw 315 back on? What happens if I just kind of force it? Mm -hmm. So maybe uh, with the 135 on curls, I could do maybe two or three. So now I can do 10, I put 155 on, I think at goals, I, would, I could do 185 for a sloppy 10. It's not That's a, a lot it's of weight. Like, it's sloppy, it's, it's kind of a cheap curl. But you know what um, scares me about that is ripping a tendon. And I have, I've had, uh, I don't know if you can see, that's a, I tore my bicep. Yeah. Uh, that I had, that happened at 40, I tore my pec and I tore both calves. And the, my calves, I can't even wear shorts just because they look terrible. Boy, but, we'll wear high socks. Yeah, I just wore jeans. <laughs> but it's true because, I mean, I go back and I was always a heavy lifter. I don't lift heavy at all. I'm afraid to rip something. They, yeah. put, me, they put me on uh, a Leviquin, uh, was it Leviquin? Yeah, which is kind of like Cipro. And Cip both, both of the drugs rip tendons. That's their side effect. Wow. And I ripped my quads when I was on Cipro once for an infection in my finger. And so this is a very common effect of certain uh, antibiotics. So I started, well, I hope this doesn't happen. They said mainly the Achilles. So the next day, wouldn't you know it, my Achilles hurts. Wow. So I was really careful about walking around. But this happens as you get older. These things you've got to take care of and do. And I was just talking to Charlie Faust on the phone, who was a Mr. American. He had a great body, and he's 75 now. He had heart surgery, he had something else, and he had a hernia. He says, I have pinched nerves in my shoulders and he can't get my biceps back to where they were because the nerve damage affects my arms, which makes sense. Are there receptor sites, nerve receptor sites that impact the ability to, uh, you actually, Jerry, brilliant guy. Brandon. Uh, yeah, I think he addressed that. I think I'd read an article that he'd written about that. Did you start to notice that it, uh, you're still a big guy. I don't know if you, I know. Uh, I don't feel it. No, you do. You're still a big, it. scary, big, scary guy. Um, Especially with red eye. <laughs> <laughs> but did you notice um, 
did you notice any drop off at, at any at any age that was so uh, substantial that because I think right now at 44, 45, it's my body. Well, not body. really. I think at 48, I was probably in my best shape muscular-wise. Wow. Like, really good. At 58, I was still wrestling in good shape. And Are then, you serious? Yeah, but wow. I, then I tore my quads. Yeah. So that set me back for about six weeks. I had to wear leg braces, and I couldn't I couldn't walk, or I couldn't bend my legs. I'd do stif stiff-legged. But I went back every day with a walker and did upper body. Wow. Because here's the thing, you guys. If you have an injury... And you got you got a baby. You got to take care of. There's no question about that. But on my legs, I can still do upper body. So I th why am I sitting home when I can go to the gym and do upper body and just take my walker? Yeah. And yeah. because I did that, and if you guys do this, your your mind tells you that every day is the same. You're doing your same routine, and you're going to heal quicker because you don't think about it. True. Yeah. And it just goes away, just like that. Same thing with the knee replacement. I was home two weeks. I had a staph infection. Third week, I'm going to the gym. And uh, I had someone take me for about two weeks, I took my walker, did upper body. So he says, why aren't you home? I said, doing what? It's feeling sorry for myself? Yeah, no, thank yeah. you. And then a fifth week, I got in my car and drove myself. And by that time, when you have that independence to know you can come and go, even with an injury or a surgery, boy, you feel so much better. Yeah, yeah, true. Because you know you're back on the men, you know. Yeah, I built that. When this happened, I built it. It's a pretty nice home gym, and, and it's just not the same as interacting with the fellows. No. I can't hear your jokes, and I, I go to a... Yeah, I really enjoy that. I, I've been getting a lot... Uh, I've been just grabbing younger people. Um, Off the street. <laughs> no, I mean, there's a... Uh, I, I, have a I have a training partner. She just has this irrepressible vitality about yeah. her life outlook. If I say, if I call her out to do 10, she'll do 12, and I call me out to do 14. That's great, man. And yeah, I've been growing. Everything's been coming up. We've both put 50 pounds on... Uh, or like pressing to see growth. It's just again, it's just me yeah. trying harder. Yeah, I don't know if it's necessary to go that heavy again as we get older. I'm trying to take more days where I rest because my body at this age needs some rec recovery, yeah. of course, right? But uh, even going and then just doing a medium weight and going fairly quick with a lot of resistance both ways works. You know, you get the muscle resistance is the whole key to growing. Get that muscle resistance. Even if it's a lighter weight and you do a few more reps, as long as you focus on those reps, you'll get muscle resistance. Yeah, I've been trying to explore different, uh, broader um, scope of rep ranges, uh, incorporating more negatives. You have uh, a bite on your arm, or is that just a nervous habit? No, it's uh, my my elbow is killing me. I figure you guys want to I keep that. Yeah, that's why I keep grabbing my elbow. Well, at least it's not your balls. No, it's like that keep, uh, comes later. <laughs> no, so I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, I just thought maybe you got bitten by something because I have bugs here. Sometimes I read. Sometimes I'll have a few drinks. I read the comment sections. I'm like, what are they talking about? I'm like, yeah, right. Yeah, that's funny. Um, where are you working out now? I go to Crunch Fitness, and then um, I think it was just they just purchased Powerhouse. It's a pretty nice little gym. It's you know it's ten bucks a month, wow. and usually you would think it, the crowd would be challenging, but it's a bunch of great people in there. And where it's is a it? Great atmosphere. It is in Northridge. It's on uh, Reseda, and that's the third incarnation of that of that gym and that space. Uh, is it the old gold? No, it's not. Uh, you know, Samir goes there. I saw him. Like, is that? I've never seen him in he's person. He's so nice. Oh, he's ridiculously nice. Yeah, I was. I can't nice. talk to him. I, I started stuttering. I was, I was so nervous. You should get my regards. He's he's a great guy. He is. Yeah. He's. Oh, you know what? He walked up. He's, he's like, hey, you're looking full today. I'm like, well, that. That's a great, that, that's what those guys did back so in the day. So it's on Reseda near Nordoff? Yeah, it was, um, it's been three different, had three different names. Um, well, that's that's what Gold's was, and then it changed, and it changed, and right across the walkway is uh, Carl's Jr. or something. Yeah, it is, okay, so that's, and then uh, he has a training partner that, uh, do you remember Dream Tan? Yeah, yeah, Muhammad. Yeah, Muhammad's a great guy. He's been he's on the show, great, too. Yeah, he's a Boy, great. that guy gets in good shape. You know what he took? He had his. He's really humble too. Oh yeah. He had a he had a t-shirt on, and a, I'm like, I kind of get mad. I'm like, who's that guy, who's that new guy, and I'm like, oh my god, it's Muhammad. He's just the greatest huge. guy. The he um, he guy. sells Dream Tan. He sells emu oil, which is a healing oil that goes penetrates. When I go over to his warehouse, he gives me three bottles. Always give them to me for free. He never charges me. Nice, nice. But yeah, he's in great shape. I mean, that guy can be yes. huge, like overnight. And then he can come down too. He goes up and down like that. He's. I think he said he's. Uh, what is he? Two twenty five. You know, some here looks great too. He has abs. I know. He, he looks absolutely great. Yeah, he's back in shape again. I saw in the gym, um, <clears throat> have the honor to train next to this guy, and there's, a, I don't even know, uh, not definitely not demeaning any uh, any YouTuber out there, um, but there's there's a YouTube guy. And just some kid in the gym's almost pushes Samir out of the way. It's like, hey, bro, can I get some pictures? I'm like, I'm like, Mr. Olympia is right there. Yeah, he's right there. And another guy asked, uh, he was asking me a question about traps. I'm like, like Mr. Olympia is right there. I had that guy's poster on my wall when I was 11 when I first started. Yeah, but yeah, poor people guy. Don't, people don't know. It's it's. I was just saying to somebody else down in Golds in Venice. 
It's a whole new group than it was years ago. Yeah, it's a yeah. Group. And if you go up to somebody and say, "Do you know who Joe Gold is?" They say, "No, I don't know." Yeah. And if yeah. it hadn't been for Joe Gold, there'd be no Gold's Gym today. Yeah, true. People don't realize that. So um, I did a whole thing on that too. You can look it up. But it's sad because the generations have changed. Training has changed. Now they're using balls and medicine balls and all kinds of cables and stuff. I guess they work for what they're doing, but there's nothing like old strict bodybuilding. I, yeah, so I, I still go old school. I'm like, well, maybe I'm missing something. And, um, you know, again, I'm, I'm definitely not demeaning any, any of the new techniques, but <clears throat> it's kind of like every fad that we've seen come and go to sell, to sell a product. Yeah, just like diets are fads. You know, you had the high bodybuilding diet, which was back in the 40s, high protein, low carb, then it became the zone, then the Atkins, then the Beverly Hills diet, then something else. And basically the same diet that it was 50 years You're ago. You're manipulating three variables. Right. We did, we were talking about diet, and then somebody was like, that guy's an idiot. It's all about your macros. And I remember, I'm like, well, what is that? What is a macro? I have a lens, macro lens on my camera. Well, he, was, it up. he was talking about uh, protein, fat, carbs, and that there was, uh, I think that's a diet. Um, so it's all about your macros, and it was well, kind of disproven. But there was no science to it back in the 70s. The guys ate high protein, low carbs. We didn't measure. We tried to get 200 grams of protein a day, and then we had our fats of avocados and egg yolks and that. Yeah, yeah. But the, as far as carbs, no, there was no breads, no rice, no potatoes, no pastas, no cake, no sugar, no cookies, no fruit until Sunday. And then you could have all that you wanted. And then one day, it doesn't. <clears throat> it goes right through you. It just goes right through. So you don't get fat off it. And, and you guys always knew anecdotally <coughs> what worked. Because I remember yeah. when I, the first time I met you, I had asked you, I'm like, hey, what did you guys actually eat? Yeah. And I think you, did you either blog about it or I found it on your YouTube? I wanted I, to find out. I think you did discuss the, uh, yeah. discuss the diet. It was a very simple diet. And it's not complex of, you know, like uh, a cheese omelet for breakfast with cottage cheese. Yeah, yeah, that's patty. what you said, yeah. You know, and then midday was an, uh, a protein drink, and lunch was always a, a beef patty with cottage cheese and maybe a salad. And then the same thing at dinner. I always barbecued two beef patties with uh, cheese on top of the salad and some cottage cheese. Every night it was almost the same thing. Did it get boring? Yeah, but then it didn't. I was kind of craved it. Yeah. You know, because I saw results. And what do you do right now? I have cheesecake and strawberry uh, cheesecake and apple pie and my chocolate milkshakes. No, well, your energy levels are always incredible. No, no, no. I eat like I always did. I eat like that. Sometimes, like today, I had a... Uh, uh, well, there's a restaurant here that they call it California with um, tuna and cheese and Brussels sprouts and all that. And it's grilled on sourdough. So I had some bread with a big deal. Nice. I'm not competing in the contest. Yeah, yeah, true. But I have cottage cheese. If I have a burger, burger and cheese is good. I don't eat all the bread, but I have cottage cheese. But it's like a hamburger patty and and kind of again. But that's how I eat. I go to dinner or something and I see them ordering like skillet potatoes and french fries with cheese on top and gravy and it, you know I know they like it but it doesn't appeal to me. And I feel lethargic God, I'm sure. Oh my god. And this is the other thing and we talked about this a lot of you guys remember I went out a couple of weeks ago and we had dinner at some people's house and they gave little chocolate fudge brownies with ice cream on top for dessert. Now sure it tastes good. Yeah. I didn't really want it and so everybody ate it and I ate it. The next morning, my eyes were swollen. I felt like just like I had a hangover. I felt lousy all day from the sugar. Yeah, yeah. And I had no idea that would do that, but it did it. Yeah, I can't really. Um, if if I just wreck my diet like I did this weekend at the gym Monday, I just I, I'm like, why do we even work out and diet Monday through Friday? From if I'm just going to derail it. Yeah. This much. Do you remember Zabel Kaczynski? No. He worked for Joe Gold. He always had the best abs. He passed away many years ago. He was in his 80s. But he was always in hard shape. And and Joe hired him. You guys will love this. He hired uh, Zabel to watch the gym when he wasn't there. But Zabel wanted comfort, so he bought Zabel a barber's chair. And he put a barber's chair behind the desk, and Zabel always had dark glasses on. And he'd be laying back, and he's sleeping, but you couldn't tell. The phone would ring on the wall, and I'd say, hey, Zabel. phone's ringing. He says, that's all right. They'll call back. Nice. Someone would come in to join. He says, I'm busy right now. He wouldn't wake up. So he was just in a barber chair. Yeah, but this, here's what I'm going to say. His philosophy was, and he had really strong abs, tight abs. He says, Rick, you can diet all week long if you want. Sunday's your junk day, but if you work out Monday and Tuesday and you want to eat some carbs on Wednesday, eat them. They're not going to bother you. And then Thursday, you go back on your diet again on Friday, and then you have a little bit on Saturday. You don't have to take one day, but every two or three days, if you want a little something, it's okay. And then go back on your diet because your body needs that. It needs a little bit of something. True. And he was always ripped. So I kind of took that to heart, and I thought, well, that's how you're supposed to eat. And so nowadays I do. But I don't really go for the cookies and the cakes and that kind of stuff anymore. It's like fruit. I like fruit. I like watermelon. You know, yeah, yeah, I do too. So I guess you can get away with some of that. So what are your plans for the future as far as training? Um, you know, sometimes I want to compete. Sometimes I don't. Um, you, again, again, being in a different uh, phil philosophical space after uh, having heart failure, I kind of want to do... I've been taking my neighbors. I'm not trying to, vir I'm not trying to virtue signal here and pat <coughs> myself on the back. Um, 
But I started showing my uh, 13 year old, uh, it's my neighbor's grandson, started taking him to the gym and, and we can't go full throttle, but I enjoy kind of handing down the lessons that you guys, you guys sure. have always handed it down sure. to us sure. and always thought it was incumbent upon us to do the same. And uh, probably more interested in that, uh, the rescue, uh, I've been working a lot. Um, I've been trying to get into uh, just d different hobbies. I'm like, you know, I kind of, there's this thing I, I did well. Um, I did well, on, it was, they're really small shows and probably anybody could have won those, but I feel like in life those are three things that I, three trophies that I have on my uh, shelf of life, something that I perform well. I'm sure. like, I want to revisit it and find out that uh, I suck at it. <laughs> you know, well, I, there's a time to quit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And some yeah, that's don't. the same at my age. I'm like, I, I really don't know if I can, am I going to present the same physique? Probably not. It doesn't matter. You just train for yourself and, and be happy. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I've been doing more um, more cardio-centric training with the running, and I, I enjoy that. I've been trying to eat for, I've been trying to do everything for health ever, ever since getting out of the hospital. Um, it's cute to, to look big, but uh, at the, you know, walk around at 250, I, I just don't think I can no, do it for 10 more not, years. It's not necessary. It's yeah. not healthy, and, and who cares? Yeah, and I, I feel, I think my, this is probably pseudoscience, uh, I feel like I have like a genetic set point that wants to be 220 and anything beyond that I'm, I'm kind of pushing. Yeah, just do what makes you happy and people don't really care, they, they look at you and they think you look good and that's all that matters. Yeah, true, true. So if somebody wants to reach you, is it Facebook? John Keen on Facebook? Yeah, yeah. K-E-E-K-E-E-N. Yeah, I, uh, mine's under uh, John M. Keen. John M. Keen, and um, anywhere else? Twitter or Instagram? No, I don't, uh, I'm, I think I'm too old for the Instagram. I just learned how to use it because it helps my show, but it does work. Well, I want to thank you, John, for taking time, sitting at my back door 20 minutes, not letting me know you were here. No, I was sweating. <laughs> I thought you were coming to the front door. It's a, we're here in the San Fernando Valley, it's like 100 degrees. It was 113 on Sunday. Today is 91. Yeah, yeah it's cool cool out there. Uh, thank you guys for watching Rick's Corner. Thank John for being here. And we're going to post some pictures along with the interview, and we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Drayson.com. He is the equalizer, baby. See you next time.